guys welcome back to my channel welcome back if you are new my name is Hetty and I post videos every single Sunday all about eating disorders travel lifestyle and mindset so this video that you're about to watch is slightly different to ones that I've already posted on my channel so let me know if you enjoy it definitely comment down below if if these types of videos you really enjoy so I was actually on Jacqueline's podcast this week so I returned the favor and also interviewed Jacqueline who has her own podcast who which I'm gonna link below and that is all about how to break the habit of being bulimic and binge eating specifically so she's got such a good a platform and loads of really helpful episodes on her podcast so I will definitely link that below and you can check that out Jacqueline's such a nice person and she's so so helpful and in this video she's going to share her experience with bulimia in a different form to what I had and to what I experienced so my experience is on her channel on her podcast and Jacqueline in this video is going to explain how she recovered from bulimia I really hope you enjoy this video guys and I hope it can help anybody that is struggling and just know that you are not alone in this and whatever our eating disorders may not be exactly the same as how you experience them but just know that you can recover and I hope just by speaking to different people and seeing other people out on the other side it can really just prove to you that you know recovery is possible so definitely keep that in mind always reach out as well if you have any questions about recovery or anything like that um do comment down below like this video if you like this video and of course a like and subscribe hit the, the bell notification as well um, and that will notify you when whenever I upload next so I really hope you enjoy this video guys and I will see you in the next video so yeah so if you want to just introduce yourself a little bit to like to people that are watching who you are and sort of what you do and who you help sure yeah so I'm a recovery coach and I specialize in bulimia and binge eating specifically I struggled with it for many years and on top of that, I have a podcast called Binge Breakers and an Instagram called Binge Breakers as well. And I'm just trying to reach out and help people as much as I can. Amazing. And if nobody's checked out her podcast, by the way, definitely do. It's, it's so good. That's kind of how I discovered you as well. <laughs> um, so I guess, do you want to go into sort of where it all started for you? Like, what's your story? Sure. Yeah. So... It's always weird talking about yourself, but it's hard. Um, yeah, I'd say I had a pretty normal childhood. I did struggle a little bit with an eating disorder when I was younger in high school, but it didn't really stick with me. It was very short lived. Uh, but I think as a child, I was always kind of like a, obsessed with how I looked. And I thought that that had a lot more value than what I, what it actually does. So, and then I, turned 18, I went to college, and I had just gotten into fitness and working out, and my body gained a little bit more weight than I was used to, and it was, I was never overweight, but it just was, I was a little bit bigger, and obviously, like, you're not gonna look the same as what you did when you're 15, so I... So how, been, old, how old were you at this point? I was 18. 18. Mm -hmm. So, just put on a little bit of weight, nothing crazy, but... I started quickly trying to diet, and then throughout college, I remember my whole college experience just being with, tainted with the idea of like, I need to lose weight, I need to lose weight, and I was always on this diet or that diet, mm -hmm. and I'd exercise, and I'd get down my weight, and I'd gain that weight back, and um, sometimes, and each time, the scale would always go like a little bit more up, and a little bit more up, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. uh, <laughs> then I actually went to study abroad in Manchester, England, so awesome time in my life uh, and during that time I kind of forgot about weight loss I still worked out there but I wasn't as focused on how I looked because I had so many distractions going on and then I came back to America that summer and I realized I was I had weight I was a little bit overweight at that point according to BMI standards mm -hmm. so I gained a bunch of weight that I didn't really realize I had gained and so that's when the darker thoughts started coming in. I was never really depressed in college, but then I started that summer to talk quite meanly to myself. 
I would say things like, you know, you're disgusting, you're worthless, like how could you be this overweight? Um, and I was really depressed about it. And then I was thinking back about this. I didn't mention this in my first podcast where I also told my story, but I was already starting to have binge eating tendencies then. Like, and I remember you saying you would eat oatmeal and binge on oatmeal. I would do something very similar. I, I would not keep food in the house because I was trying to not gain weight, mm -hmm. but I would have oatmeal. And so I would binge on like peanut butter and oatmeal and there wouldn't even be any sweetener in it. It was just, so it's almost like really, whatever's available, kind of. Yeah, exactly. Whatever is available to numb those feelings out. So I would do that, and then I'd be really sleepy and just depressed, and all the signs of depression were there. I just didn't really know it. But anyway, I set out. It was my senior year in college by then, and I set out to lose 25 pounds. And very quickly, that wasn't happening fast enough for me. And I was really desperate to get the weight off because I thought that that would make me a better person. And so then I started lowering my calories quite severely. Um, and I was also obsessed with exercising. I remember one time I had gotten a blister on the bottom of my foot um, and it had gotten infected, but I was so desperate to lose weight. I was still running on that foot. And I was like literally limping on the treadmill um just to show I've how actually it. i've had that as well and yeah you know, you just me. <laughs> it's crazy it's i like think back and it's like i should have been resting that foot yeah and it was it was not good but i i just was so desperate i'm sure people in the gym thought i was pretty crazy but anyway um a few weeks i had just about reached my goal a uh, weight that i was trying to go for and i one day i I was just so hungry and I was constantly mentally abusing myself uh, that I ate off plan and I, there were, I had these like two low calorie things in my house. It was like these crappy Miss Finster's cookies and Arctic Zero ice cream yeah. and I binged on it and then something flipped a switch and I was so desperate to not go back to that weight that I just was like, you can't go back there. This can't happen. You have to get rid of it immediately. Like, they're just like, this is the point where we don't go back. And so I remember that I could throw up my food. I had never really been that success successful at it in high school, but I did it then. And it was very easy for me as an adult. I don't know why. But then I, I quickly cleaned up the toilet. And then I remember just thinking, like, what have you done? This is crazy. And I knew that it was unhealthy. And I knew that... I shouldn't be doing what I was doing. So I just, I just kind of sat there, I was a little bit scared and I vowed to never do it again. And I was like, no one can know. And that was a big thing too. Like no one can ever know this happened because I thought they were gonna think I was crazy and um, selfish for some reason. Mm -hmm. But of course that didn't work out that way. I then in two weeks I had lost all my weight. So there was no like goal and I slowly but surely started binging again and again and sometimes my roommate would be home so I wouldn't be able to binge and purge and I started taking breaks from class uh, I would like and I lived on this big hill like it was the campus was down here and I had to run back up the hill and I would just like dart back up the hill so I could binge and purge while my roommate was at home and I was letting a lot of my life just kind of fall apart while I was obsessed and I was in a nasty mood all the time mm -hmm. and this continued for a while but I was just people couldn't understand why I was so mean and why I was so like low energy and irrit irritable yeah. but it's because I was exhausting myself both mentally and physically all the time mm -hmm. uh, so that's how that started and I was gaining weight back slowly but surely because um, I couldn't purge every time I binged and it just, and purging isn't really like a great fix for weight loss anyway. So I was gaining weight back slowly but surely. Eventually I moved, I graduated from college and I moved to be with my partner in Colorado. And he had, he didn't know we've been together since high school. So we've been together a long time, but he didn't know this was going on. Eventually I was so depressed and knew I needed help. So I told him and that was, that was part of the start of my recovery, I think, was telling him because I had it all made up in my head that he was going to be mad at me and all of these crazy things, but he was really supportive. 
And eventually the bulimia continued for years and the depression got even worse. And as we were saying before, like I would have days where I'd be coming home from work and I would just want to crash into a tree on purpose, but I never did that. I had a lot of loved ones that loved me. And so I cared about how they felt, which is kind of crazy that I didn't value my own life, but I valued their opinions. Mm -hmm. Um, But eventually I stumbled across a podcast that (laughs) told me basically you have to treat yourself kindly and that if you stop talking trash about yourself, then you're going to be in much better mental state. And so eventually I kind of picked up the pieces. I started treating myself kindly and eventually was able to recover. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Did you, um, did you recover all on your own or had you got treatment or was it just support from your friends and family? Um, I didn't get professional treatment. I was ever in an eating disorder treatment facility or anything like that, or I had a therapist, but I did have life coaching. And that's why I coached now because it's yeah. so drastically changed my life. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had that. And then I had obviously the support of my family. Well, yeah. actually I, I had the support of uh, my partner. He's my family, but <laughs> my, I didn't tell any of my family in itself because I don't care about them, but they found out when I released the podcast that I have been struggling with this for longer than they ever knew, which yeah, yeah you know what? I, I can resonate a lot with that. I think it's crazy, but there's a lot of people that kind of do, especially with me as well, like they don't know this kind of side to me or this struggle. And it's very difficult for people, I think, to share because it's almost like you can put on an act in front of those people and mm-hmm. pretend everything's OK. And it's like when they find out that you used to struggle, it's almost like, you know, they can't even believe it or comprehend it. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of people will struggle to kind of open up to those who are closest to them in some ways. Yeah, I mean, there's just this deep-seated shame in eating mm, disorders. Massively. And even though I had, I had gotten to a much better mental state and I was treating myself kindly and I wasn't, I wasn't beating myself up all the time, I still was like, only two people can know. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. And so, but when I set out to do coaching and... Uh, I knew that I needed to market myself so that people could find me. One of the things was my podcast. And I was like, if I do this podcast, everyone's going to know. And so I had to do a lot of work on revisiting that shame and putting that out out into the world and just accepting people's opinions of me. Yeah, that's powerful. It's really powerful. And have you got any kind of tips or things that you actually like practical tips on what you sort of did to maybe change the the ne- the negative narrative that was kind of going on in your mind you know being kinder to yourself and things like that have you got any um you know practical tips for people that might be struggling with low self-esteem and things yeah so one is i came across the concept that you can think whatever you want to think about anything Mm. and your thoughts are always a choice Mm -hmm. and so when I was struggling with negative self-esteem I thought I was you know just a poor excuse for a girl that's really the my common phrase in my head is that you just assume that those things are true your brain offers you that thought and you think it's true and in some ways you want to believe it because it excuses all the behaviors that you do you're just a bad person that of course you do these things Mm -hmm. but and I thought for some reason that being harsh on myself or um, being mean and pushing myself all the time was going to get me to the results that I wanted, but really they didn't. Like I just said, like it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you think you're a terrible person and you're going to behave in such a way. Yeah. So that was number one is that I realized that my negative thoughts weren't helping me at all and that I had the potential to be something different. And I had never thought that before. I just thought what I am is what I am and I can never change that. Mm-hmm. So it's number one. And then you have to slowly build those thoughts that are positive. A lot of times people try to go from, I hate myself to like, I love myself. It doesn't work that way because you're smart and your brain's like, we don't believe that. So what I did is I came up with a few beliefs and number one is like, I respect myself. And I did make a pact with myself to love myself, but I was like, at least I respect myself no matter what. And I will always have my own back. And that sort of led to me appreciating my body again and getting myself in a neutral place with my body. Mm -hmm. And um, 
understanding that like hey it, it, it my body lets me live each day it lets me enjoy life each day I should appreciate it and then slowly but surely new thoughts built up where it's like you know I love this about me I enjoy this part of me and I appreciate myself but you really for people that are struggling with negative self-esteem you really need to make a choice and make a path to never talk trash about yourself again because it's not serving you and it's your choice which maybe is a little bit of tough love but I truly believe that I I totally agree I think like when I first realized that our thoughts are a choice and that we can either choose to believe them or not I think that was a huge turning point for me as well because like what you said it's like every thought you have about yourself you know you're worthless or you you know whatever you kind of take it as a fact and that it's you know you can't change it at all and you know the truth of the matter is you can and it it just Mm kind of takes practice and and repetition and I think as well because we've probably had those kind of thoughts on on our autopilot for so long we almost don't recognize them when when they sort of pop up and I think you know if people can start recognizing recognizing them first off um it will help to sort of break that negative loop almost yeah absolutely um, they're just old thought patterns yeah they're not, I mean you, they can be true if you want them to be true but they're yeah. just old junk in your head that you've been playing on repeat for years yeah and I liked what you said as well because I think there's a lot of like and I think the intention is good, but there's a lot of like self-love accounts on like Instagram and things that say, you know, tell yourself that you're beautiful and that you love yourself. And for somebody that's struggling with, especially like a, an eating disorder, it is, it just feels like a pack of lies. Yeah. So just to kind of say that it, it's, it's really hard. And I think like what you said, sort of break it up and even just becoming neutral, you know, I accept myself. I don't love and adore myself yet, but mm-hmm. I'm sort of building up to that, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, so I know you said like when you first, when you first purged for the first time, cause obviously I, I never um, threw up, like was sick in my eating disorder, but so it's slightly different our stories. So when you first did that was, I know you said that, you know this is the last time that I'm ever going to do that but was there any sort of feeling of addiction there in that sense like did it did it become sort of like a love-hate relationship with that aspect like almost like relying on it or or feeling good after it um there was the relief of not having to deal with the weight gain yeah and that was what I was scared most of I was terrified of gain weight and so I was like whew that is fixed, you know, so that was the nice thing about purging, is, like, at least I can get rid of what I'm doing, yeah, um, and there, so there was the addiction point in that, because, like, in the back of my mind, that was my easy way out, that Mm -hmm. was the way I could counteract anything that happened, but along with that, there was fear, shame, and guilt, and all those other emotions, yeah, um, and it's kind of funny, I, I remember it happening, but my brain has kind of blocked part of it out, like, I, to really dig up those memories my brain just doesn't want to remember it yeah I I was exactly the same especially for your podcast I was like you sort of forget a lot of things and Mm -hmm. which is a good thing really um but yeah that's it's interesting to see sort of the opposite or the the different side effects of like eating disorders and things um so do you have any any again some practical tips for people that might be struggling who might be like knee deep right now in bulimia you know they're being sick and or throwing up and you know and they're sort of in that cycle yeah so bulimia is just a habit and that's what I try to get across in my podcast and my coaching a lot of people have this shame about it and they think that they're just a terrible person and that's why they do it mm-hmm. and that's not the case like you just you have a really strong habit built up because especially with bulimia through throwing up you get immediate feedback Mm -hmm. so you get the dopamine hit of food and then you get the relief from it and you know so easily that you can get rid of that food through it so your brain really quickly puts that on autopilot in the back of your mind and then you get so good at doing it that you don't you're not even aware that you're doing it and so what I recommend to people is to first stop judging yourself, of course, and then second, become aware of your habits and 
start to, like, if you binged and purged that day, start to diagnose the situation almost like a crime that just was committed and be like, okay, when did it happen? What were my triggers? What was I thinking? Your thoughts are important because often your brain tries to trick you into doing it. Like, oh, it's just this one time, right? So start to be onto your brain, start to recognize what's happening. And then the next step is you have to interrupt your habit loop. You have to turn off autopilot. And so you have to, um, it's the best way to phrase this. What I find to be really helpful is pausing. And so in the moment you're going, you're like, you have this urgency to binge, right? And you're going and going and going and you don't even want to stop. But if you can pause for just one minute, it'll really help you regain mental clarity. Mm -hmm. Even if you still binge and purge, it'll help you understand, oh, this is what's happening. This is how I think in this moment. This is how I feel. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it's the art of not doing it. So it's the art of feeling your feelings, feeling that urgency to binge and not act on it. You don't resist it, but you just allow those emotions and you let them be in your body and you get really good at feeling emotions because oftentimes people that are bulimic, people that struggle with eating disorders, we're really good at numbing out any unwanted emotions or thoughts with food. That's, it's our alcohol. So what you need to do is you need to regain the ability to deal with your emotions. And the more and more you're better at feeling anxiety and not trying to buffer it out or feeling restlessness, not trying to buffer out, the easier it'll be not to binge. So I know that was like a lot packed into no, one, no, but no, that's, right. that's, that's how perfect. I covered. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's really, really good tips. And yeah, I think the main thing is recognizing as well for people that might be stuck in that habit right now is that it is a habit and it is not it's not personal because I think when you're in that sort of behavior it can feel really personal and it can feel like you're the problem and recognizing that it's just a habit it's just a habit like any other habit and you can you can break it um Mm -hmm. and I think that's the main thing to to sort of take away and um for anybody listening that you know is struggling definitely check out uh, Jacqueline's podcast because it's it's got you've got a lot of like useful tips on there and um, practical tips as well um so we'll round that up because I think my time is coming up um but so you mentioned obviously that you coach as well so uh, where can people find you yeah, so they can find me on Instagram. I'm really active on there. I try to do stories and keep you guys in the loop and give advice on there. Uh, obviously, you can go to the podcast, Binge Breakers. Um, I think even if you just type in Bulimia, my podcast comes up. So you can find me there. And then if you want to work with me, I do one-on-one coaching. And obviously, if you're trying to recover, having someone help you along the way, really helpful. So you can go to bingebreakers.com, and that's where you can find out how to work with me amazing amazing definitely check it out and i will link all your details as well in in the description as well of the video youtube star (laughs) (laughs) you're the podcast star (laughs) well thank you jacqueline so that was my interview with Jacqueline. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, guys, I will link her details down below. Really, really hope that you enjoyed that video and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.